Okay, so I, I, I want to unpack this a little bit more. I want to unpack this a little bit more. You said you went in and you pitched. Help, a, help us around the pitch because I, I also know that you participated in pitch competitions, right? I also know you, you know, yeah. you, I also, also know you're, you know, you're versed in that arena. So like, let's say there is somebody mm-hmm. and let's say that they have a product. Mm-hmm. What, what's, what's yeah. something that we should consider when it comes to pitching a product? Like, like, let's say, you know, m- maybe, maybe we asked for a meeting or we hadn't even got the meeting just yet. Going into it, yeah. Like, what is something that we should be considering to where we can make what we have, if it's created or not, mm-hmm. make make them want it? Yeah. Well, the first thing to do is to remember who your audience is, right? You have to tell them what's in it for them, because a lot of times we go in and we tell our whole story. You know, I had eczema, and you know, I, or my child had eczema, and I wanted to fix the eczema, and so I created this soap, and it got rid of the eczema, and this is my brand, and you should sell it. Okay, but how does that help me learn as a as a store? How does it help me figure out how this is going to move units? Because that's what I want to do, right? As the as the brand owner, as a store owner, how are you going to help me make more money? Because again, mm-hmm. what's in it for me? And I always say that everyone subscribes to the same radio station, which is WIIFM. And that's what's in it for me. And if you can't tell Mm -hmm. them what's in it for them, you will not get the sale. You will not get the deal. You have to go in talking about what they can benefit from, not what you can benefit from. You can lead with what's what's in it for them. And then you can come back and tell the story if you want to. But the first thing is, here's how you're going to make money with my company. Here's how we're different. Here's what I'm going to do to support this brand in your store so that it moves units because as a small business owner selling a product to a store, um, of course you can sell, you know, one-off products here and there online, but you also want to get that retail money too, because retail money is they're paying a, a lower amount per, per product or per unit, but they're buying in volume, right? So instead of selling mm. one, um, whatever you make, let's say you make, um, candles you know instead of one candle they're buying 12 candles buy a case of 12 candles so we want to get all the money from everywhere right we don't want to just get just the money from the ones and twosies we want to get somebody who's going to buy 12 we want to get multiple sources going to buy 12 so you got to go in there tell them what's in it for them that's the first thing secondly if you can know exactly who the person is that you're talking to which is not always easy but if you know who your meeting is with that's beneficial as well because you want to tell them what's in it for them as a brand, as a store, but you also want to speak to that person's um, needs and desires. So I'll give you a prime example. When I got the meeting with Whole Foods, I didn't know who I was going to talk to. I had no clue. Keep in mind, my products are specifically made for mostly black women and, and so we have some Latinas, um, even some like East, Eastern Indian women, but for the most part, black women, right? Very few white mm-hmm. women buy from from natural issues um unless they have like a biracial child or if they've adopted a black child or they're married to a black man or something like that right so when i went into the meeting i didn't know who i was talking to but i did know what was in it for them right i know that whole foods as a brand they focus specifically they love to focus on locally owned products they love to support locally owned brands and small brands right so that's my first thing so that's the benefit To them, I'm a locally owned brand. I'm also black, right? Because they they're in they were coming into the city of Detroit, right? You can't come into the city of Detroit and not support black folks, right? <laughs> Detroit is pretty much black, right? <laughs> so I'm a black woman. I am a small business owner. Well, I'm a black person. I'm a small business owner, and I'm a woman. So just me being a black woman, those two things gives them a benefit because they want to you know support diversity, right? In addition to that, I have a, a product that also targets Black people, right? Whole Foods sells other hair care products, but none of them were made specifically for Black people. You're in the city of Detroit. You want to make money on shampoo because the Black people who come to your come to your store, they're not buying Alafia. They're not buying, you know, Giovanni or whoever these other brands that you you have. You just they're just gonna be sitting on the shelves. Don't you want somebody in your store that they're actually going to purchase? And they're going to purchase even more because they know that I'm a black woman and they know this products are made for them, right? So I'm speaking to what's in it for them so they can sell more units. Now, as far as the individual I was talking to, did not know who I was going to be meeting with. So I'm in the completely in the dark. 
when I go to that meeting, it's a bald white man that I'm talking to. <laughs> so not only does he have no hair, so he can't benefit from our products, but he's white. He's not the target audience, and he's a man. <laughs> so he's definitely against the target audience. I'm talking to him. <laughs> eyes are glazing over. Like, he is just not into it. He's just like, I don't understand the the need for this, right? He's just not getting it. Luckily for mm. me, this woman comes in, and she passes the door. She said, hey, can I join this meeting? And he's like, yes, please join the meeting. She's a Latina, head full of hair, right? So I start to pitch all over. Now I'm speaking to my target, right? And she's like, you know what? I get this. Like, I'm five minutes into it. I would already talked to him for like 25 minutes. He's like, ah. I talked to her five minutes. She's like, I understand this 100%. All this hair that I have, I got two daughters that have the same amount of hair. And the, the, um, you, the unique selling proposition of my products is that there's three products in the system. Well, at the time, there were three. We got more now. But there were three in the system at the time. And those three products allow you to go from wash to done in 30 minutes or less. Whereas at the time, yeah. Black women, even now, are used to spending hours on their hair, right? So these three products will do the work of 12 products and get you done in a fraction of the time. So she's like, I got it. I got all this hair and I got two daughters with the same amount of hair. My husband's bald. He doesn't understand. But I have to get up at four o'clock in the morning just to do their hair so that we can all get up and get out the house at 730 to get to work at school on time. If I can take these products mm -hmm. home and I can get our hair done in a reasonable amount of time, you will have your first, first purchase order. So she's supposed to call me back in a week. Um, she took the products home. And ironically, she lives in Chicago. I don't know what she was doing in Detroit, but what's, oh, what is wow. for you is for you, right? So... She came, took the product. She called me back in three days and was like, Gwen, I use these products on me and my daughters. And we got up at a normal four o'clock, but we was done by 530 with three heads. And we was just sitting there for the next two hours like, oh, I guess we don't have to get up at four o'clock anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and she gave me my first purchase order. But that, had I known that I was speaking to her or had I known I was speaking to him, I would have asked if he had maybe a colleague who maybe was my target audience, right? But luckily, I did mm. speak to her. So the difference is when I was talking to him, he was completely like, I don't, I don't understand this. What's, what's the point? She got it right away because she's the target. You know what I'm saying? So if you have a way to know who you're talking to, you can then tailor your pitch to that person. Another example, and I don't mean to take up all the time, but another example of this is- No, 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 you're good, you're good. I had a pitch competition I was doing this is the very first pitch competition I did. It was for Black Enterprise. Uh, the, the grand prize was $10,000. This is still around the time when I had $32 in the bank. So I really needed this $10,000. So I, um, I, get, the money, I get, the, get to the competition and I have to go on stage. Now, I also was not super comfortable speaking in front of people at this point. So I'm super nervous. I'm in front of all these people, like thousands of people are at this conference. And I'm also pitching for $10,000 that I really, 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 really need. Um, but I knew who the judges were. They told us who the judges were. And so I was able to Google the judges. And I knew that one of the judges had just had a daughter. And mm. I was able to see the daughter. She's like, her, she's like a baby. She's maybe like one or two years old. And the baby's hair was really uh, coarse, right? And I remember seeing like a video of her like trying to do her daughter's hair or her husband trying to do her daughter's hair and like having trouble with it. So clearly I'm going to talk to that, right? Now I didn't say directly, hey judge, I can help you with your daughter's hair and make it easier to manage. But I did say, hey, and it, you know, our products are, are perfect for adults, kids, and babies. Um, they're safe. They're proven effective for all ages, no matter how young your child is, even one or two years old all the way up to 100 years old, mm -hmm. right? So I'm speaking to something that she's going to resonate with because she knows, without me even saying that I've researched her, she knows, oh, I've had this problem with my daughter's hair. She's telling me that this is a problem. This is a solution to my problem. She's more likely to give me her vote than other people because I'm talking directly to her because that's what's in it for her, right? And then, of course, I talked to the other guys, the other, the other two judges who were men as well, but, you know, she was who I honed in on because I knew that I could for sure get her vote. So, and I ended up winning. Mm. Gwen, 
you are a marketing monster, okay? <laughs> you are a marketing monster. Oh, my goodness. Oh, sweet, sweet baby Jesus. Like, oh, man. Like just just hearing you break down hearing you break down the the whole foods pitch, like how that came about, even though you were pitching to somebody who wasn't your target audience in the first place, but you still were ready to pitch to him. Then the other lady came in and then the pitch competition. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, Gwen. Okay, we get it. Okay. If you leave what's in it for them, it will make it so much easier. Just leave, just focus on what's in it for them. And then your pitch is so much easier after that.